Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this really great project, the most important lecture you can listen for COVID uh, management. Uh, great rule of point of care ultrasound in management of refractory hypoxia in COVID-19 pneumonia case 2. I will label this project uh, point of care ultrasound protocol for severe COVID-19 pneumonia. Start, I was asked to assess a 47-year-old male patient known case of severe COVID-19 pneumonia on high sitting of mechanical ventilation, B14, F200, and the high inopressive support, nor adrenaline 30 mic per minute. We start critical care ultrasound. We start by inferior vena cava. It was full non-distensible. Start sub after doing a few cava, go to the subcostal view as you see here. Dilated right side compressing left side from subcostal view. Dilating right side with inspiration increase dilatation here compressing left uh, left side. A long axis parasternal view dilated right side compressing left side. A parasternal short axis view. D-shaped uh, uh, left ventricle due to dilatation of the right ventricle compressing the interarticular septum. And here is very important point here for this patient. As you see here, the D-shaped of the left ventricle is present in both systole and diastole. In both systole and diastole, there is D-shaped. Uh, D-shaped, D-shaped left ventricle in systole, this is pressure overload and this is expected to see in COVID-19 uh, patient due to several factors. But D-shaped left ventricle during diastole, that means there is volume overload. And this patient has volume overload and need to be deloaded to remove volume to relieve the stress of the right side and the compression of the left side. This is very important point in the management. For chamber view, mark dilatation of the right side. You expect the right side is 60% and less of the volume and the, the area of the left side. If you see the right side is more, almost double the left side, that means it's marked dilatation of the right side. And as, as you see here, by visual assessment, you see very sick right ventricular wall and very active right ventricle with up and down tapsy. Uh, in this uh, right ventricle, and we'll see this is very, this have very important implication in the management of diagnosis. Okay. As you see here, the uh, most of the studies really uh, with looking for the cardiac manifestation of COVID disease will as will look for the right side. As you see here in the circulation. The spectrum of the cardiac manifestation in coronavirus uh, uh, systemic echocardiography study. Result of this uh, study on 100 patients with uh, systemic echocardiography study. Result 32%, 32%, 32 patients had normal echocardiography at baseline. The most common cardiac pathology was right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction. Observed in 39% of the patient, followed by the cell dysfunction 16%, systole dysfunction 10%. So, almost 40% of the patient has right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction. Also, in this great study of the Canadian Journal of Cardiology, echocardiography finding in patients with COVID-19 pneumonia revealed very clearly here in patients with COVID-19 pneumonia, right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction is common. And its present is associated with borosorobotic inflammatory state reflecting elevated, the reflected elevated the D dimer with the active protein. Okay. That means evidence based uh, uh, data at the moment reveal the right side dilatation and dysfunction is the common echocardiographic and the common cardiac manifestation in the COVID 19 pneumonia. So, how to approach the right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction in the COVID-19 pneumonia step-by-step -step approach. You know, you need to know how to approach this common finding in COVID-19 pneumonia for proper management of the patient. Okay. Step one, 
you should know the causes of right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction in the COVID-19 pneumonia. Severe RDS causing hypoxia and hypercarbia will lead to pulmonary vasoconstriction. And applying post pressure ventilation with high sitting and high beep will give pressure overload of the right ventricle. And this one of the most causes of right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction. And a lot of studies talk about that. Number two, recurrent pulmonary embolic. Thromboembolic disease is very common in COVID-19 pneumonia. And a lot of study uh, documented and confirmed that. So you should expect recurrent pulmonary embolic as a cause of right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction in COVID-19 pneumonia. In cytopulmonary embolism, uh, 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 very important studies documented the presence of micro thrombi with fibrin and depleted thrombi in the pulmonary microcirculation in the COVID-19 pneumonia. And it, in this New England Journal of Medicine article, it reveals that it is nine times more common than H1N1 ARDS. So in COVID-19 pneumonia, it is unique to have ARDS with in situ pulmonary microthrombi, fibrin, platelets, microthrombi. So this is really the three common causes of right ventricular dilatation and dysfunction. Okay, step two. Know the answer of these questions, million dollar questions, acute or chronic pulmonary. You should know this right ventricular dilatation dysfunction is chronic process or subacute process or acute process. In our patient, we find moderate tricuspid regurgitation, but when we measure the big systolic pulmonary pressures by the maximum velocity of tricuspid regurgitation, we find here big systolic velocity, pulmonary velocity 77 millimeter mercury by adding the inferior vena cava dilatation, which means right atrial pressure of 15. And we find sick wall, right ventricle, free wall of right ventricle is sick here, 0.97, normal 0.5. And we find normal tap C, normal function of the right ventricle here, it is 2.17, in normal uh, more than 1.7. So our patient has time to compensate with stress of the right ventricle. So his right ventricle increase the wall sickness and increase the function and increase the regurg and the pulmonary generation by this uh, will contracting right ventricle. So we have signs of subacute or chronic core pulmonary, not acute pulmonary embolism and the acute failure of right ventricle. This ventricle has time to compensate. So this process, at least uh, there's weeks for this process. It seems a chronic, subacute or acute on top of chronic, but what's causing it? First, you can exclude the sole acute severe pulmonary embolism as a cause of right ventricular dilatation because of signs of chronicity. So this patient don't have acute massive pulmonary embolism, which may need thrombolysis at this time. Okay. And at the same time, by history, our patient has no previous cardiopulmonary disease to explain the chronic core pulmonary. So it is going with subacute core pulmonary because this and this is a process really with COVID because it takes weeks and please you should exclude severe ARDS, recurrent pulmonary emboli in situ pulmonary thrombosis. So in the previous uh, steps we exclude acute massive pulmonary embolism, but still we have three important factors need to be excluded in this uh, situation. Okay. Step three, please go to the line to exclude or confirm severe, severe ARDS causing subacute core pulmonary. In our patient, right upper midclavicular area, A line zero, right lower midclavicular, A line zero, right upper mid axillary, one uh, this, uh, this, uh, separate uh, B lines, right lower mid axillary, two confluent B line and the right plaps area, confluent B line 2, so right lung score 5 over 15, left lung score 0, left lower 0, left uh, upper mid axillary 0, all A lines, left lower mid axillary, confluent B line, left the plaps, confluent B line, and subpleural consolidation, left lung score 4 over 15. So being a physician, you need to be a to be wise man.
Lang water score of 9 over 30 is not matching this market overload of right ventricle, overload of right ventricle. To get this overload of right ventricle, you need severe ARDS with lung water score above 20 over 30. So at this situation, you can exclude severe ARDS as a cause of this marked right ventricle dilatation. Step four, please look at the deep vein to confirm the presence of reservoir for recurrent pulmonary embolism. It's very important in our patient. This is the right femoral vein collapsing properly at the junction of the great sufferers with common femoral vein. We'll go from this junctional five centimeter and we found it is very well compressed. That means exclude DVT for the right common femoral artery by compression technique. Left side the same. We see here uh, left side will compressed and with this, uh, from this junction of great suffering to common femoral vein, we'll go here for five centimeters, we'll compress uh, veins and no DVT of the uh, left side also in this. So we excluded DVT in both sides. What to do next if, you, if your patient cannot go to CT? In this situation, if your patient can go to CT, you should go to CT to uh, confirm the presence of pulmonary embolism. But our patient on high sitting and high inotropes, we cannot go to the patient to CT. You have other options to, uh, to confirm the presence of pulmonary infarction in this patient by looking at the lung for the famous pleural based subpleural consolidation with no color inside because of infarction i decrease the scale here to 15 centimeter per second and no color inside and this uh, the unique pulmonary uh, lesion of pulmonary infarction appear in uh, uh, great studies one of these great studies in chess journal i talk about this in previous uh, project and it is documented in in with good very sensitive with good high sensitivity and uh, specificity for pulmonary infarction okay at this step you cannot really evidence-based differentiate between recurrent pulmonary emboli causing this massive right ventricular overload versus inside to pulmonary embolism but i will give you my experience it is ex my experience i saw hundreds of cases of severe COVID 19 pneumonia really there are several important issues. Clinically, patient with in situ thrombosis has more respiratory distress with too much minute ventilation and the very high compliance. And I believe the type H, which is which has high compliance, probably this patient has in situ thrombosis as factors and pulmonary vasoconstriction as factors because this patient really have dead space have high dead space and increase pco2 despite much uh, too much uh, minute ventilation okay and biochemically you will expect a market increase in inflammatory markers in patient with incitus thrombosis because incitus thrombosis it is really uh, caused by inflammation at the end of the day so you will see a high ferritin high serial protein very high ldh Okay, going with in situ. And the ABG, you will see marked uh, increase in the dead space with increased BCO2. CT pulmonary angio can reveal the accurate diagnosis, but unfortunately, some patients cannot go to CT. But don't worry, you will start for those that go at this stage because this patient usually have high D dimer and you will start uh, full anticoagulation at this stage your patient uh, received full anticoagulation and uh, he has oliguria and was in very bad shape and acute kidney injury we start C, uh, crrt with ultra filtration to uh, remove the pressure from the right ventricle because he has volume overload and uh, thank you a lot for your watching and uh, i believe this project is very important try this protocol it works thank you